this is Michelle Kane from Michelle Kane Photography and Actions. On this video tutorial, we're going to explore Photoshop layer masks. I'll explain what layer masks are and why you need to know how to use them. Layer masks are a non-destructive way to edit your photo. They allow you to apply creative effects to your photo selectively, just where you want them, rather than globally. Layer masks are probably one of the most powerful tools inside of Photoshop, yet sadly very few people really understand them and know how to use them to their fullest potential. If you have my Photoshop actions, you'll notice that there's layer masks all over the place in those actions. And if you follow my editing tutorials, you'll see that I talk about layer masks painting in and removing effects um, with layer masks and you may not understand what that means so I hope to de demystify what a layer mask is today so we're looking at a picture of this girl here and I've just got her on the background layer and I want to show you the difference between adjustments and using um, layer adjustments so say for this particular picture we wanted to amp up the hue and saturation a lot of people will just go up to image adjustments and hue and saturation and they'll get this little dialog box that is going to allow you to amp up the saturation and we'll go nuts we'll go really really crazy here to like plus 74 and you'll see my background copy thumbnail has changed and it's become extremely saturated as well I hit OK and that's it the effect is now permanent on my background layer. That's not a very um, good way to keep control over your effects and you know placing them where you want them and not where you don't want them and this effect has happened globally. It's everywhere. A better way to do this kind of adjustment would be to use an adjustment layer that has a layer mask. So I'm going to undo that adjustment. We're back to the picture and instead let's go to the adjustment layers. Now um, in CS4 and higher you're going to have this adjustment panel which you can pick uh, your adjustments from and in CS3 and below you're going to have to come down to this little circle here and pick hue and saturation. So we're just going to pick hue and saturation and now what you see is that it has created an adjustment layer and this layer has a layer mask so we can make the adjustment let's go crazy again and make the saturation insane but now we have a layer mask and you might think well this layer mask isn't doing anything what these layer masks are they're either black or they're white layer masks work in grayscale so when you see a white layer mask it means that whatever is in front of this layer mask you're seeing completely if you have a black layer mask, and I, to get that I'm going to invert the layer mask, which is Command or Control I, or if you're using your masks uh, panel here, you can also invert it here as well. And we're going to hit Invert, 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 Command I, Control I, Command I, Control I, whichever PC, Mac, just switches your layer mask back and forth. So again we have a layer mask a white one that's showing everything if we invert it we've got a black layer mask and now we don't see that effect so if you've ever run an action and it did all its steps and then it ended with a black layer mask and you're thinking well it didn't do anything it did it did everything it was supposed to do but now it's your responsibility to add in those effects where you want them so here's how we do that if you have a black layer mask you can pick a white brush and layer masks work with brushes so let's pick a brush B for brush or here's the brush here in our toolbar and it's a black layer mask so you always paint with the opposite color of white let's switch the swatches to white and now I've got a hundred percent opacity brush I'm just going to brush right over here and we can see as we brush it changes the layer mask icon. Here's the white that I just painted on the black layer mask and where it's white it's showing what this effect did in front of it. If I hit command or control I or I'm sorry command or control delete we can go ahead and erase that back out 
and that will bring us back to our black layer mask. Let's invert it again. I'm going to hit the invert button here, but again it's Command or Control I for invert. Now this white layer mask is revealing everything. I can see everything this hue and saturation is doing over the entire image. Let's mask out some of this um, hue and saturation. So I have a white layer mask. I need to use the opposite color brush. I've already got a brush selected and now black is my foreground color that I'm painting with. And now I can begin to remove this hue and saturation. And I'm not removing it. I mean, it's not gone forever. It's just basically hidden underneath this uh, black layer mask. So you've probably heard a million times, white reveals, black conceals. So white reveals or shows everything in front of the layer mask, which is our hue and saturation. Black conceals everything in front of this layer mask, which is our hue and saturation. So it's where it's black here, it's concealing it. We don't see the hue and saturation. So let's erase this or delete this hue and saturation layer and let's play an actual action from my um, hardy actions. Let's play something that we can see the effect. And I think I'm going to run Posh. So we'll let that run. And it's going to give us a little um, message here telling us that we need to use a low opacity soft black brush. Why would we use the black brush? Well, because we have a white layer mask and we always paint with the opposite color. And we're going to paint that brush over things like eyes and skin and other areas that become too dark or saturated. And then we can adjust the layer to taste. So we hit continue and we have our layer mask selected. Well, what is this layer mask affecting? It's affecting everything that Posh did. All of these layers inside of Posh, that's what it's affecting. So white reveals everything. We're seeing everything Posh created here. Let's grab a black brush. I have a black brush. And I'm going to just keep it at 100% opacity so we can really see the changes here. And we're going to take Posh off of all of this greenery over here. So say we wanted Posh on just her for some reason and we didn't want it on any of this pretty greenery. Now I've, using a black brush, have removed Posh from those two areas and you can see it correlates to the layer mask here. So where it's black, it's covering up and concealing the Posh and where it's white, it's revealing the Posh. I hope that's making sense to you guys. So let's try it one more time. Say we do an adjustment layer on our own. Say we come up and do a, a curve. And again, I did it as a layer or adjustment layer as opposed to just coming up to image and adjustments and curves, which again will affect permanently your background copy. So we now have this as a layer. Let's do something real crazy with curves. Let's make it extremely dark so we can really tell where this is happening. So now we've created a curve and we're seeing this darkening curve everywhere because we have a white layer mask associated with it. White's revealing the curve. Now let's grab our black brush and paint out this curve. Now this curve has been removed or covered up. It's not really removed, it's, it's there. It's just covered up by the black. So if we come and we pick maybe a different opacity brush, let's change the opacity of the brush down to like 50%. So now when we brush, we have some gray over here. And so gray in the layer mask is showing us that we haven't covered 100% of this curve up, but we've covered a portion of this curve up. Now, if we want to go ahead and say this curve layer is horrendous, why did we put that on there? Let's take it out. We can go ahead and just delete the curve layer and we're back to our background copy. If, however, I had gone up to image, adjustments, curves, made this crazy curve and said, okay, it's happened to my background layer and the only way I'm going to be able to change that is to go into my history and paint with my history brush um, back into this picture and I really don't want to do that uh, it, it's it's a not it's a destructive way it's also kind of a permanent way because in your history 
you only have so many steps in history that you can go backwards. Again, if I were to just do it with my um, adjustment layers, I can do many, many layers in my layers panel and then just delete out whichever layers that I don't want. The last thing I want to show you is how you add a layer mask if you're not using adjustment layers like curves, um, hue and saturation levels, things like that that already come with the layer mask. So again, we're back to our background copy. If I want to, say, darken selectively parts of this picture, one thing I can do is I can duplicate my background copy, Command or Control J, or we can duplicate the layer. And we're going to set this layer blending mode to multiply. And multiply is a darkening blending mode. So now we have the regular background layer, and we've got a, a duplicated pixel layer that's darkened. So now if we want to remove this dark effect off of just a portion of the picture, rather than use the erase tool and actually take out and erase the pixels from this layer here that we can never get back, we're going to use a layer mask. So how we do that is just come down in here at the layers panel and we're going to click this little rectangle with the circle and it says add layer mask. So click that and now we see that a white revealing layer mask is hooked on to this darkening multiply layer. So what we can do now is again make sure that the layer mask itself is selected rather than the pixel layer. The mask is selected. We're going to have a white mask which is showing. We're going to hide some of this black uh, or this darkening effect so we need a black brush. I'm going to hit B on my keyboard for brush. I already have black selected and now I've got the opacity to 50% opacity on this brush so let's just start to remove some of this darkening effect maybe off of her face and I'll drop my opacity down to 20% on the brush and remove a little off of her shirt. We'll remove some off of this background where it's gotten too dark. Maybe some right here and her jeans. And so now we're selectively taking out, covering up some of this multiplied darkening layer. This darkening layer now on the layer mask you can see that there's a very dark spot, not 100% black, but a very dark spot where we painted over her face and some gray spots where I've removed or covered up a portion of this darkening effect. Now if I disable this layer mask, or like there we go, if we disable this layer mask, there's without masking out some of the black, and here's with masking out some of the black. So this is showing an example of where we could selectively add in a darkening effect and then selectively remove some of that darkening effect. Hope that gives you a better explanation of what layer masks are, why you'd want to use them, and how you'd use them in conjunction with Photoshop Actions. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check my website, michellecanephotography.com, to see more video tutorials, um, editing blueprints, seeing how I edit photos from start to finish. Thanks so much. Have a great day.